All right, we are out to test some firmware today. Yesterday we got a major release of firmware for the GJI Mini 3. It's a little bit windy on this uh, location out of uh, the city, but I thought I would just go out and uh, test the latest firmware that was dropped yesterday from DJI. That was uh, both an update for the DJI RC as well as an update for the Mini 3 Pro, adding some pretty cool features to the drone. And we also got a new version of the DJI Fly App 19. Eight, it's called. Now, uh, probably a few of you would say, ah, isn't the, that the right version? It's uh, called a 199, but then the, but the 198 uh, turned out to be buggy for the Air 2S owner, so they had to pull that one down and replace it with the one version 199. Unfortunately, I'm on a pretty slow internet connection, so I didn't have a chance. It would take me like a couple of days to update this 900 megabyte package. So uh, I decided to do a test flight with whatever I got, especially because the changes was only bug fixes for the Mi Air 2S, as far as I am informed. So what I'm flying with right now, let's just go in and have a look. So I'm flying with the 198 and the firmware 01000500. So the aircraft firmware, that's still the, the right version. It's only the application version that has been updated. Looking at the release note for uh, the application, it seems the majority of this is to support some of the new stuff that have been released for the Avada, the new controller and the new goggles. But the firmware, for the Mini 3 Pro, that's adding some pretty cool stuff that I will show you here. They've added some uh, new reset options, which we can look at uh, once we land the drone, but that's not the most interesting part. The most interesting part is that they added the gain and expo tuning, the maximum flight speed, brake sensitivity, and other settings that can be adjusted in different flight modes. And it requires as a minimum the 198 to take advantage of that. So if we go under control here, and we go under the gain and expert tunings. You would see, and that's super cool, they still have that three tabs with parameters for each of the flight modes. So there's one for cinema mode, there's one for normal mode, and there's one for sport mode. We had those options uh, in the past, but they added a significant amount of uh, extra parameters to the plate with the new update. So basically the new ones that they have added is a maximum horizontal speed so we can put a limit or cap on how fast the drone can fly. We can also uh, put in a maximum ascent and descent speed. They've split the, those up into two parameters so you can have different speeds depending on the drone is ascending or it's descending. The angular velocity and the, the yaw smoothness, we had those in the past. That basically means that if I turn up the angular velocity the yaw speed will be pretty fast. So it's yawing around its own axis in a pretty rapid pace. That's something that we normally don't like. Then I can add some yaw smoothness here. And if I do that, it basically means that when I let go of the sticks, the drone will take a while for it to slow down like this. So these parameters can be adjusted so you are getting like a more smooth experience when you yaw the drone. Uh, the brake sensitivity, that basically is a new one that's also not been there in the past. And that turns out that uh, this can, you can basically yeah, adjust how the drone brakes. So when you let go of the stick and you fly towards something, it will actually brake very softly. So let's just find something that we don't brake. <laughs> so if I'm flying towards this windmill here, and I'm letting go of the pitch stick. You can see the drone will continue to fly. Maybe it's easier if I just use the ground here as an example. So, so if I fly in this direction, full speed, ish, and then I let go, you can see the drone continues to move. This is basically the brake that uh, you can introduce. So you can adjust this. If I put this up to 150, I would assume the drone will stop 
immediately. At, at least as fast as it can because of inertia and all that stuff that goes on uh, up there. <laughs> so, if you end up in a situation uh, where you mess up the settings, you can always scroll down to the base here and then just reset them back to normal. The rest of the parameters we have seen before, there's like the expo settings that adjust the sensitivity of the stick. So it's less sensitive in the center and more sensitive towards the edges. This is some uh, something that the RC people like a lot, that you can do that. So if I take this one pitch and roll, you can see that I can change basically how the, the curve looks like. Um, depending on uh, how I touch the sticks. I made a separate video about that, uh, that you can find somewhere um, up here, I guess. I'll try to link it here, or at least from the end screen. Then we have the two uh, parameters uh, for the gimbal, where you can control basically the speed of the gimbal. So if I put that one up to very high speed, you can see that uh, when I touch the gimbal here, it moves very, very fast. And if I put some smoothness in here, you would see that it basically, even though it moves fast, it basically stops very softly. And th those of course should be slowed down because we don't like these uh, rapid movements. Again, let's just reset everything back to uh, what it was. And then go up to the two parameters that I think, or the three parameters that I think is uh, really, really interesting. And this is the max horizontal speed. That is one of them. Let's just play around with the cine settings here. I don't expect that we can fly full speed because of the weather. So we just go in here in the cine setting here. And then now if I fly forward here, I should be able to get around 20. Oh, I need to put it in cine mode here. I will be able to get it around 20 kilometers an hour here, 21, like that. In case that I don't want the speed to be that fast, I can just reduce it here. Let's put it down to 10, around 10-ish. So if I continue to fly here, you can see now the speed maxes out around 10. So in this way, we basically got tripod, tripod, tripod. In this way, we basically got the tripod mode back on the drone here. I don't know if it's ever been there, but we have something that resembles a tripod mode. The same goes with the ascent and the descent speed. So right now I can basically ascend around seven kilometers an hour and I can descend around the same, maybe a little bit less. And I can go in here and let's just for the sake of this demonstration, just bump it completely down to this. So you can see now it limits itself to 3.6 in a descent and ascent is also limited to 3.6 kilometers. So in this way, you can put a serious cap on the speeds of this drone to make sure that you get some nice looking cinematic footage. I can just switch it back here to normal. That's at least one thing that I would recommend you is that you uh, leave at least one of uh, the flight modes at the default settings. So you have a way of escaping in case that you need extra power. I think it's a good idea to leave the sport mode alone because that normally doesn't look very well or very good when you are filming. So if you leave that, you can always revert to the sport mode in case you end up in a situation where you need extra power uh, to so bail you out of a, a situation. I have a good story I can tell you about that. <laughs> we actually needed that. <laughs> but we had, enough, we had enough of crash stories on the channel for now. So I will uh, postpone that to uh, another day, yeah? So these are basically the parameters uh, that you can play around with. You can set them individually for each flight mode. So let's just recap. You can uh, cap the horizontal speed of the drone. You can cap the ascent descent speed of the drone. You can change the angular velocity of the drone when it's turning. You can adjust how it should land basically when it turns and you let go of the sticks. You can change the brake sensitivity when you're flying with the drone, how soft it's going to stop when you let go of the sticks. You can change the exponential settings if you want to mess around with the sensitivity of the sticks. You can run out of battery in a short while. <laughs> you can change the max control speed of the gimbal as well as how soft it lands when you let go of the wheel here in the back. 
and you can of course reset everything back to standard here uh, with this option in the base. What the right settings are for these parameters, I will make a separate video about that. Once it's available, I'll try to link it through this card. So the last thing I want to show you is uh, those new reset options here. Those are available under the About tab if you scroll all the way to the bottom. So in case you want to clear all data on the aircraft, you can simply press this button and then you can see that all data generated during use and stored on the aircraft will be erased, including data in the aircraft internal storage and SD, aircraft logs, unlocking license and other user data stored on the aircraft. So that's definitely something that we don't want to do right now because then I will lose everything that I just recorded. But this is a nice one. I guess it's a nice one if you've got to sell uh, the aircraft to somebody else. Then there is uh, uh, the reset all settings. And that one will basically take all the settings that you have been messing around with uh, on the aircraft, not only on the on the gimbal and uh, expo settings, but under the camera settings and everything, and then reset that back to default. So in case you end up in a situation where you can't find your way back on the optimal param parameters and you want to start all over from scratch, this is the way to do it. You can simply reset the aircraft back to default. I will take the 199 on a test flight as well as the updated DJI RC firmware once I get access to an internet connection that is not like Stone Age speed like the one that I can access right now. But as I said, these updates are not adding any new features other than what I've shown you in this video. So you should go out and try it out. It's actually pretty cool that we have gotten this extra control with this firmware update. By the way, did you see the video where I showed it's actually not necessary to fly with ND fillers to capture smooth footage? That's quite a controversial statement. Am I right or am I wrong? Tell me by watching this video. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.